Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new camp build. And once again, we're not too far from the Canal County Nuka-Cola plant. We're just building on this little location here and we're gonna work with the red rocket stop that was added a couple of weeks ago by the Atomic Chop and turn it into a full-blown red rocket gas station. So, do hope you enjoy. Let's jump in, take a look at this. As I said, we're just south of the Kanawha County New Coca-Cola plant. Just in the same spot we've been the last couple of weeks. Probably move on in the non-too-distant future. Got Camden Park over there. That's Charleston just across the way. You can see just a little bit south from the vault there as well. So, here we go. Red rocket stop. <laughs> so I've already dropped this in. We're actually a little further over to the right um, in terms of the build area. Because I have a little bit of an issue trying to source out with the, the lie of the ground here. But uh, I would recommend moving maybe a little bit further along that corner there if you're wanting to do something similar. The ground's a little bit flatter over there, make life a bit easier. But this is where we are, and this is uh, we're going to manage with. We saw I lined up the uh, first foundation there already, just to save a little bit of time. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just under three foundations wide, this uh, red rocket stop, so you should have plenty of room to build, as long as you've got a little bit of space between then building off to the side and the uh, red rocket structure you should be fine so we have got a few foundations in we're going to go around the corner because we want a little second building here for a kind of shop and somewhere to for the person who's taking this place over to live but there's a couple of things we need to do including lifting this foundation up because it's clipping through the ground there and that just won't do so once we've uh, persuaded it to stop being so temperamental we'll grab this one here fortunately it's going to have to stay as is because for some weird reason the game is convinced that one is floating, I don't know why. Very, very strange, but let's grab that, hold down the place button, and just nudge it up one notch. Just uh, one turn on the mouse wheel. Same principle on consoles, I understand it. And we'll just snap these back on. And there we go, so the building is going to be slightly higher than the forecourt there. That's the foundations in place. I do apologise for the bad weather, by the way. This little corner of the map is a pain in the neck for that. But uh, we do what we can. So, snap a staircase in there. The uh, concrete ones are very forgiving about snapping through foundations on a lower level, so no problems there. And we'll get some walls in. Yep, we're going to go with the uh, warehouse pieces, which I don't normally do, because I'm not the biggest fan, but it's kind of suitable for the sort of location we're in. So, we're going to go with. And we'll uh, look at getting a roof over the forecourt here. So I did toy with a few different ideas for how to get this to work, but the simplest option is just to use these flat ones and then carry them on over the front part, at least, of the building. Otherwise we'll have to have a separate wall floating and it won't look very good. So, conveniently, this roof will snap straight through the front of the red rocket, as long as it's not too high and doesn't snap any further than that, really. But, as you see when we stand back, you can't really see the red rocket sign there, so I'm going to pull that roof out and we'll just go with the four in front of the building here and we'll get a roof in. So I should probably point out, obviously this build is not completely original. There are other people who have done similar things, similar principles. One of the big uh, names in that space being Wasteland Dovakin, who built actually in this same location and did her own take on a gas station a very long time ago. But uh, now we have the Red Rocket, it seemed like a good time to do uh, my own version, put my own spin on it. So this is what we're doing today. So walls are in, and I'm going to put some internal walls in here. I actually ended up making this back room a little bit bigger in the decoration phase. I wanted a little bit more space to live in. But uh, for here, we're just snapping two doorways on back to back so that we can have wallpaper on either side. You see, we can convert them back into walls there, and we're good to go. We'll get this roof on. So, breaking up the flat structure a bit, as I like to do, get a little arch roof over this bit here. See if it wants to cooperate, which it really didn't for some weird reason. Couldn't see the snapping points, I think. There we go. And we'll plug the sides up. One, two, and two more. Come on. Snap in the right place. Thank you. Four. And there we go. One little problem we did have is whilst we didn't have doubled up walls below because we used the doors, it won't work with the um, half walls on top, which is a little unfortunate. So, we're going to have to make do with what we've got in terms of this back space here. I'm not going to be able to put one there, as you can see. But uh, we'll manage. It's not perfect, but it'll have to do. So the last thing we need to do, 
at least in terms of the main part of the build, is put some supports for this roof on. Because, you know how I feel about floating roofs. Or floating anything, really. So, getting this in place was a little bit awkward. As you can see here, the roof is a bit higher than the staircase goes. So, we're going to need to lift that staircase up a little bit. We've got a bit of a gap there. Whip that out. I'm just going to pop this foundation up. And we'll move over a little bit further. So I need a little bit of space in order to get the floors to go into the right place. So we're a little bit further back there. And I faffed with this for a while, but it just didn't want to quite cooperate on the inside. So we'll move it over and come around the outside of the roof here. Sometimes it'll snap through, sometimes it just says no. So well, It kept going green, but it just wouldn't actually place the right way. So what can you do? There we go. Floors running around the outside. We'll now use these to force the pillars to snap onto the corners. They're technically snapping onto the floors, not the roof, but when we take the floors out, it will look fine. Again, because it's slightly more than uh, one wall piece high, we're going to need to use two, which is eh, a little suboptimal, but we'll manage. Sway this foundation snap back down again. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to take it out because it won't let me place this lower pole. However, once I take it out, it's fine. So, build order and all that. There we go. Now we get the foundation to go back in, no problem. Nice. So we'll get these floors and the staircase off and get the forecourt put back as it should be. There we go. Jobs are good, and that's the main part of the build. Done. Did simple. There's one other little thing I do want to show you, which is obviously this drop off the side of the red rocket is far too high, so we're going to need a staircase there, which unfortunately won't snap to the side of the prefab, so we're going to have to have one placed independently. So I'm going to line this foundation up with the centre of the door so that the staircase will eventually snap in the right place. There we go. Looks about right. And a little cockeyed. We'll sort that out. Yeah, man. There we go. And now we're going to have to take the red rocket building out. So we'll pull that out. Fortunately, it's uh, very easy to place back. I was a little concerned, but... It's uh, surprisingly cooperative, this thing. Apart from on the one side on the right there where the door is, because um, there's a bit that sticks out. That can be annoying on occasion, but not a problem in this particular case. That's why I built the thing this way around. That and the fact there's a door there. So, we'll drop that back in. It's gone straight through the staircase, which wasn't quite what I had in mind. And we'll nudge it back over a little bit. And it's a little bit of fiddly. It takes a little bit of uh, trial and error to get it to play ball, but... Get it lined up, make sure it's not too close to the building on the left there, otherwise it's just going to say no. Around the corner, obviously that's clearly not going to do. A little bit of adjustment required to line it up a bit more straight. There we go, and now we can just drop it down, and it should line up nice and even. Then as uh, the foundations were nice and even, so before we moved it, so that works out. There we go, staircase is now in place. So. A little decoration later, let's have a look around this place. <laughs> I've used a couple of the Slocum's Joe bits and pieces as well, that uh, came in the same, uh, not the same pack actually, it was in the pack with the obviously Slocum's Joe stuff in the train car, but a little um, self-service coffee spot in a uh, garage, petrol station, whatever you want to call it, is uh, in keeping with the vibe. So borrowing another idea definitely directly from Wasteland Doverkin, using the play of ending there to simulate the petrol pumps coming around inside we're going to have to uh, assume that this place was thoroughly looted following the dropping of the bombs because whilst you can get stuff onto the shelves it takes a lot of time and effort and a little bit of glitching so um, Final Render actually has a great tutorial for that if you're interested in that sort of thing you should check that out but uh, unfortunately I did, just didn't really have the time to uh, do that on this occasion so we'll have to uh, assume it's been looted and a few boxes back here. The idea is that this space was a storage space that they've uh, just crammed the kitchen into and then just put this lean-to on the back of the main building. So somebody's obviously moved in and decided to set up shop here. Sort of extending the building and just using what's there as their home. So, a few little bits of decoration, a few signs around. Looks pretty good in the evening, this. We'll see in just a moment sign out front, swing around and look at the garage part. I had to do a lot of server hopping whilst I was doing this build because I wanted to get the street lamps on the front. Unfortunately I couldn't quite get one into the corner on the uh, right but 
we managed. It, uh, it took a while to find the plans, and then that front corner is just right out, just outside the build area, so it was a bit of a no-go, unfortunately, but it is what it is. However, quite happy with the decoration in here. So to change it up from the one we did last week and go a little bit closer to the Fallout 4 design. It's also a bit more viable as a place where somebody might back a car into to have it worked on. Have the uh, equipment in the centre there. Specifically the power armor station. And there we go. You know, see that corner that I didn't quite get the way I wanted. <laughs> yeah, it's come out pretty well. The grass clipping through the foundations did bother me initially, but um, sort of decided that it's been, what, 20 plus years since the bombs dropped and it's been mostly unoccupied that time, so it kind of makes sense that the wildlife would slightly have taken the area back, which is fine, so I kind of like it in the end. I thought we'd take a little look at the uh, structure from a bit further back here, because um, I had to take a quick run out for some steel partway through the build, and uh, just about half a second, I did wonder whether or not it was an existing structure, which I was quite pleased with. <laughs> So uh, I thought it was worth a little look at that. Quite pleased with how that looks from a distance. Looks like it belongs. Have a quick look around the inside. The lighting is not too bad, really. That uh, Slocum's Joe vendor is a little bit uh, annoyingly loud, but we'll make do. <laughs> I've actually tucked the generators sort of behind the red rocket stop. You could put them on the roof, but it's a bit of a, a, bit of a problem with the uh, wiring. So I had to run the wiring through the wall. For that particular uh, vendor station in here. Much less illuminated in the back room, so it's uh, a lean to on the back of the building. A little bit of light in the storage room, though. There we go. Oh, whoops, I forgot to cover the wall out. <laughs> that window is supposed to be a blank wall. Got to, got to change it out, unfortunately. Oh, well. It looks fine. Let's see the uh, wires running between the buildings there. Let's have a look inside. That well, place is providing plenty of light. A few other bits and pieces on the wall. I thought about seeing if I could um, persuade a light to sit inside the little light fixture on here. As there are light fixtures on the ceiling, but they don't put out very much light, so I have to make do. So there's one other thing I wasn't entirely overjoyed about, which is the height of the foundations here, which is why I suggested earlier on moving a bit further to the right, but uh, I we'll have to assume that uh, nature's taken its course and it's no longer as smooth as it once was. <laughs> there we go. I do hope you like it on the folks. If you did, please do hit those buttons for me. It's always very much appreciated. Social media links, merch store and channel memberships available via the description if you're interested in that sort of thing. And if you get a chance, do join us for one of the live streams as well. We're having a lot of fun playing Fallout and starting Horizon Zero Dawn next week. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.